Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Bowley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, July 1st, 2020, and I am pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, July 2nd. Uh, currently futures uh, pretty flat, um, but uh, started off the second half of the year pretty strong. We're gonna get into all of that in uh, just a couple of minutes. Let me walk through the agenda with you first. Uh, we will have that daily market recap coming up first. And I'll get into talking technically. I wanna show you some of the key areas that we're breaking out today. These are groups that have been leading the market uh, really throughout this pandemic and they continue to lead as we head toward earnings season. I think this is really important. So I'll go through some of those with you. We're gonna jump into some chart breakouts. Uh, then we'll get through momentum sleepers. So there are some stocks I think that are going to break out, just kind of sitting on the cusp of it. Talk about some of those. A um, couple of companies I've got for you in the earnings spotlight, and then uh, we'll wrap up the show with three you must see. Before we get into all of that though, let me walk you over to earningsbeats.com. Uh, if you're not aware, you can sign up for this uh, Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. It is free. Just simply sign in with your name and email address, hit the subscribe button. No credit card required. If you wanna unsubscribe at any time, feel free. I think you'll find uh, uh, the newsletter though to be pretty uh, informative and educational and provide some good trading opportunities as well. Uh, but go ahead and join the community. Uh, we'd love to have you. Simply go over to earningsbeats.com and sign up for our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. I also want to point you to our portfolios because I'm really proud of the performance that we've seen in these portfolios since we started them. Our flagship model portfolio now has been around for over 19 months. And in 19 months through the trade war and that cyclical bear market, through the pandemic and that cyclical bear market, the model portfolio is still up through Wednesday's close. It's up 103.77%, while the S&P 500 is up just about 16%. Very, very strong action, uh, great outperformance, and actually just becoming a free Earnings Beats Digest subscriber, you'll get a good sense of what we do in terms of putting together our portfolios and our trading strategy and so forth. Um, a lot of good information, a lot of good education, and I uh, think you'll enjoy it. So uh, go over to earningsbeats.com, make sure you sign up. All right, let's take a look at the daily market recap from Wednesday, and uh, you can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished down. It was a bifurcated market, so we had a little bit of up, a little bit of down. The Dow, though, was down 78 points. The S&P 500 was up 15. NASDAQ, on a relative basis, doing very well, up about 95 points, even though it did come down off of its high earlier in the day. Uh, did manage to close at a new high. And the uh, mid-caps, small caps, you can see on a relative basis, underperforming, both finishing in negative territory, but all of our index is still above the 50-day moving average and still in an uptrend off of that low that we saw back in March. From a sector perspective, real estate was kind of an unusual leaderboard today. Real estate, uh, which has been lagging, communication services, which for the most part has been pretty strong, and then utilities, which has been lagging. Those were the three that were leading today. Um, discretionary also having a pretty good day. Discretionary has been strong. And then energy down at the bottom again. This has been one of the weakest areas. We did uh, fail trying to get back through that 20-day moving average, and we closed today beneath both the 20-day and the 50-day moving average. So really want to see this one move back up and get through those moving averages. Certainly didn't happen on Wednesday. You can see the XLE was down 2.43%. 10-year Treasury yield. Um, had a pretty good day. In other words, money was rotating out of treasuries and that sent the yield up, the 10-year treasury yield up to 0.68%, which was a rise of about three um, basis points. We had the um, ADP employment report come out in the morning on Wednesday. It was not particularly good. It actually came in a little short of expectations for June. However, May was revised significantly higher by like, six million jobs higher. Um, so instead of, I forget, I don't have the numbers here in front of me, but I believe we were expecting something like, or we had actually recorded and posted something like a loss of uh, 2.8 million jobs in May. 
and actually it was revised to a positive three million. And again, I might be off a little bit on those numbers. I don't have them right here in front of me, but it was close to a six million job reversal. Uh, pretty uh, impressive, and I think that's one of the things that helped the market, even though uh, we maybe started off kind of flat, but we did see the bid pick up throughout the day. Um, it was really just the small caps, mid caps, and the Dow that uh, underperformed. Speaking of that, um, I want to get into talking technically, and I want to show you a little bit here first about the, uh, the relationship between the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, mid caps, and small cap uh, stocks. Take a look at this. This is a one-month, 60-minute chart. And you can see the Dow Jones went up back on June 8th, hit a high, came back down on June 15th, hit a low, and we've been trading in this range ever since. We put in a double bottom though, and now we're trying to bounce back off of it. The S&P 500, same high on the 8th, same low on the 15th, rallied in between here, never quite got down for the double bottom though, like the Dow did, and actually has performed a little bit better on the way back up here over the past few days. So S&P 500 looking a little bit better than the Dow. Look at the NASDAQ though. The NASDAQ 100, the NDX, on the 8th, when the Dow topped, the NDX was lagging a little bit, but notice it kept going up the next couple of days, even as the Dow and the S&P were dropping. And then everything fell together on June 11th and 12th. But look at the recovery on the NASDAQ 100. By June 23rd, you can see we had actually taken out that earlier high. If you look at the S&P, S&P was not close to its previous high. The Dow was not close to its previous high. And when we pulled back again, the 23rd through the 26th, you can see the NASDAQ clearly had a higher low in play. The S&P is slightly higher low, but the Dow was equal. And if we go down here to the mid caps, we had a double bottom on mid caps, double bottom on the small caps, and the bounce here has not been very strong on these two relative to what we're seeing on the NASDAQ 100 and even on the S&P 500. So the rotation is really critical. You need to understand that the market is showing a lot of rotation. Not all areas of the market are being treated equally. This is the exact same thing we saw back in March and April. And as we head for earnings, and I've been speculating that this was going to happen, I believe Wall Street is positioning in those stocks that continue to benefit from this paradigm shift with COVID-19, the social distancing, working from home, those same themes that carried the market back in April, uh, or even, really even March through April and into May, they are coming back through again. And I think it's really important to recognize that and be prepared to benefit from it. Now, as the NASDAQ was moving up today and actually threatening to, it actually broke out on an intraday basis to an all-time high um, and, and did close at a higher high as well. But on an intraday basis, you did see that, that uh, little bit of selling in the final hour. So we did come back down a little bit. But when you look at leadership in this market, I want to show you a few groups here. First, let's start with software. So software, off of that March low, here it comes, rallying back. Not only are we just you know, getting a dead cat bounce and a rebound, we went back and threw the February high. We're at an all-time high on software. This is a group that despite the pandemic has continued to grow their earnings. Many of the component stocks in software are growing their earnings, some of them very rapidly. And in a low interest rate environment, Wall Street is willing to pay up for these companies. We are seeing it over and over and over again. Every time we get a 20 day test, that has been a great buy signal on software. We just saw it again earlier this week, back on Monday morning. Got all the way down to that 20 day and we've rallied very strongly back to the upside. But check out uh, Broadline Retail. Another great area of the market since the March low. Breaking out, this, this area broke out in the second week of April above the February high. And look at it just continuing to move up. So thinking, Broadline retailers, you should be thinking Amazon. Amazon, absolutely powerful breakout today. I'll talk about that one in just a minute. Then we've got specialty retail. Specialty retail moving back up, breaking out in May, continuing to move higher. 
specialty retail very strong. And then can't uh, go without mentioning the toys, toy index. Another huge breakout today here. So while the Dow was down, the small caps were down, mid caps were down, NASDAQ kept moving higher and it's the same groups that are leading. These are the groups that are starting to see that pre-earnings run up that I've been talking about. And I think we're gonna see it continue. I think Wall Street is positioning for some big reports coming down the road uh, and, and really in just a few weeks. All right, one other thing I wanna to mention too, um, because this pre-earning run-up that I'm talking about, this isn't just something I'm making up here in 2020. This is something that the market has a history of doing. If you look at the performance from June 28th to July 17th, so that's like three weeks heading into earnings season. If you look at that period over the last seven decades on the S&P 500, the annualized return is 25.13%. Now the S&P throughout the year, you know, if we look at just average annual returns, we're talking about 9%. So the, this period from June 28th, which we've now begun through July 17th, has a um, annualized return of 25%, which is almost triple what we tend to see throughout the year. I mean, if every day was created equal, we would have annualized returns roughly of 9% every day. Every period would have annualized returns of roughly 9%, but that's not the case. The market tends to move higher into earnings. I think it's important to understand that, and uh, many of these groups I've just talked about, I think are gonna help lead the market higher. Now, are they gonna be volatile? Yes, they always are. High growth companies are gonna be volatile. They're gonna be up a couple of days, they're gonna pull back, they're gonna scare everyone, then they're gonna be back up again. Um, you just have to tolerate that. That's got to be part of your psyche when you're looking at the market, you're trading, you're investing, whatever, is you have to understand that there's going to be some volatility in here. I mean, you can see even on the toy index, you know, four days, we were up at 1085 here. Four days later, we were under 1,000. So really quick, 8 9% just chopped right off. But then it comes right back a week later at a new high. Got to be prepared for that. All right, let's move on to chart breakouts. I want to show you some of these charts that broke out today. And these are, many of these stocks are leaders. These are companies that are, that are some of these are littered throughout our portfolios um, that are really helping our performance. We, we are fans of leading stocks in leading industries. That's how you beat the S&P 500. And I want you to take a look at some of these stocks I go through. Here's Amazon breaking out to a new high. We got uh, Netflix. Netflix breaking out to a new high, volume picking up. Tesla, Tesla's on a roll. When Tesla gets on a roll, you gotta be careful, if, especially if you're on the short side. I love Tesla, um, and I, I own a number of these names I'm gonna be going through here. Um, Shopify, S-H-O-P, look at this move. Since breaking out about a week and a half, two weeks ago, just going straight up another 7% today on Shopify. This is the anticipation. We're going to see some huge earnings reports out of these companies. That's why they're going up now. Now, would I hold them into earnings? I think that's gonna be really scary because they may have a lot of good news already built into them, we'll see. ATVI breakout today. This is Activision Blizzard. You can see the move there, volume strong. How about Wayfair? Wow, what another big day on Wayfair, 11% today. Breaking back out above the high set on June 22nd. Volume picks up, huge move there. DocuSign, been one of the best performers in the market um, for quite some time. Check this move out, closed another at another high. Volume here was just kind of average, but this stock barely even pulls back far enough to even get a 20-day test. We've only seen two 20-day tests since back in the beginning of April. Prices just are staying above that 20-day. DocuSign is going to have a huge report. Amgen, big move today. Amgen had been a little bit of a laggard in the biotech area, but not today. Um, there was news that their, one of their patents, that they were um, uh, in a suit. The uh, judge ruled in Amgen's favor. And as a result, big, big rally on the stock. You can see the stock up 8%. One of the biggest days you'll see on a stock like Amgen. Amgen's a large biotech stock, doesn't usually see those kinds of moves, but uh, certainly saw one today. Microsoft, 
Talked about software. This is one of your leaders right here, Microsoft breaking out to a new high. How about Peloton? I've talked about this one all the way back since March, early April. I've written articles about this stock, about how many shorts have been betting against this stock, and it, they are paying the price as the stock just keeps going higher and higher and higher, breaking out, closing for the first time today above $60. Uh, how about Electronic Arts, EA? Another breakout. Huge move on EA. PayPal, PYPL. Just keeps going up like so many of these other stocks, barely even pulling back to test the 20-day moving average. Does any of this look like a bear market to anyone? Because I don't see it. Now, there are companies that are struggling with this pandemic, and yes, I would avoid them. But there are companies that are absolutely crushing it with this pandemic. They're building market share, they're growing their earnings, and interest rates are even lower than they were earlier in the year. So you're getting, it's literally nirvana for some of these growth stocks. And that's what the market is beginning to price in, has been pricing in. Uh, how about Wingstop? Another stock that I absolutely loved and have loved for quite a while. Look at the stock breaking out again today. It's a restaurant, a restaurant in a pandemic, continuing to shoot higher, but they've increased their market share with delivery. And of course, you're also seeing uh, opening of restaurants in various parts around the country. But uh, they were able to, to manage with their takeout business. They grew that during the pandemic. So those are just, I mean, I could go on and on. There's so many stocks breaking out. But those were a good group of, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 that I gave you. These are all companies that are outperforming the S&P 500. Wall Street is bidding these shares higher. And they're going to... I'm going to say for the most part, I'll be shocked if they don't come out with big earnings reports when they report later this month or early August. All right, now I'm going to move to Momentum Sleepers. Now, Momentum Sleepers, these are stocks I'm very, very high on these as well, but they haven't seen that breakout yet or they're right on the cusp. So when I look at a Momentum Sleeper, I'm, you know, I'm seeing the NASDAQ breaking back out. But these are companies that have been leaders, but they haven't made the breakout yet. So they're a little bit different than the list I just showed you. I'm bullish all of them. But these are going to be ones that uh, we want to watch for and see if maybe we get some uh, breakouts coming up, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. So let me start with MTSI. This is Maycom Technology Solutions Holdings, and it is in the semiconductor space. Semis, you know, haven't been able to break out above that 4,800 level that was set back earlier in June. So we haven't seen this breakout. So the whole group really is a momentum sleeper, just kind of going sideways. But MTSI, you can see on a relative basis to the semis, it's a leader. It's near a 52-week high. Relative to the S&P 500, near a 52-week high. The group relative to the S&P 500, near a 52-week high. Hasn't made the breakout, but you can see all of these tops right in here, 34, 34 and a half, 35. Well, we're at 34, 45, just waiting, it seems. Uh, if the semiconductors go, with this being a leader, I would expect we're going to see a breakout here on MTSI. All right, we mentioned Wingstop, a restaurant breaking out. Here's another one, Chipotle. This has been one of my favorite restaurant stocks. Actually, it's been my favorite restaurant stock probably uh, for the last six, seven quarters. I can't remember how many times this stock has been included in our portfolios at Earnings Beats, but I want to say probably the last four or five quarters, it has been in every quarter. Um, it's just a very consistent performer. Yeah, it took a big hit in February and March, but look at it come right back. And that's the thing about leaders. When the market gets hit like we got hit back in February and March, or like we got hit with the trade war in December of 2018, Everything goes down. But when Wall Street starts buying stocks back, they go to the leaders first. And that's why it's important to have leaders in your portfolio. Look at uh, CMG. When we started, when that bottom hit and we started seeing the rally in CMG shares, look at the fast move back to 52 week high versus the restaurant stocks. And by mid April, we were breaking out versus the SP 500. Chipotle is a leader. And right now, we got it just moving up, sideways consolidating, just waiting for this breakout. 
I think it's coming. DXCM. This is Dexcom, medical supplies company. Looks very similar to Chipotle, really. Set that high back in May, going sideways for a while. Breakout above 425 is what we're looking for. Ring Central, RNG. Beautiful move up to about the 290 area. Notice that's right where we are now. Closed today at 290.31. We got equal highs coming across here, higher lows. This looks like an ascending triangle to me off of an uptrend, which is very bullish. A breakout above 290 would measure about 50, 55 points. So we're talking a breakout above 290 measuring up to about 340. Ring Central looks good. All right, here's a biotech for you. Seattle Genetics, S-G-E-N. Got up to almost 170, pulled back, went just above 170. I almost see like a little cup here with a handle. Breakout above 170 would measure up another 25 bucks or so. S Gen looks good. Sienna, this is in the telecom equipment group. Telecom equipment struggled a little bit the last few weeks, pulling back. You can see on a relative basis, the group topped about three, three and a half months ago. But Sienna, relative to its peers and relative to the S&P 500, has been doing very well. So I like the stock, nice uptrend, sideways consolidation. I'm looking for a breakout here. How about Humana? I was talking to members recently about Humana, the fact that it just been sta staying back around this 370 level, had a huge move up, outperformed, broke out, went above 400, pulled back, and it was kind of frustrating. You know, a lot of the healthcare stocks have pulled back while the rest of the market's been going higher. I think it's just a matter of time. Money's going to rotate back, and I think we're starting to see that right here. Beautiful move up on uh, Humana just over the past three, four trading days, setting new highs. Another stock doing very similar is MASI, which is Massimo Corp. Last couple of days, see that uh, hammer, that printed tail went all the way back down to the support area, down around 211, 212, came back up, finished strong last couple of days. If we can get through this 230 area, I think this is a stock that could make a run back up toward that 260 off of an uptrend. I think this is gonna turn out to be a nice little cup. So I'm looking for this one to run to 260 and then we'll see from there. Uh, just a couple more here. JKHY, this is uh, Jack Henry and Associates. This is a financial administration stock. Financial administration, you can see making the breakout above this double top. Not quite breaking out above the February high, but I think it's coming. This is a stock, JKHY, that was leading the S&P up until mid-May. It was doing pretty well. I mean, it had a huge, huge move on a relative basis back when the market was getting hit. This stock actually held up very, very well on a relative basis and then started coming right back up again. I would, I'd be looking for the stock to make another run for 194, 195. Another one where I see an uptrend followed by what I think is probably gonna be a cup. Uh, JKHY looks pretty good. Last one I have for the momentum sleepers is Dollar General, DG. Huge move up off that March low all the way through the end of May, early June. And now we have just been sideways consolidating. Another one that's been very frustrating but it's part of a very strong group. Your specialty retailers, which have been strong versus the S&P, um, Dollar General was very strong up until April. And then as it moved up, it's labored a little bit on a relative basis. But I think that this sideways consolidation has probably added a little bit to that underperformance. And I'm looking for this breakout. You get the stock going up through 194, 195, I think you could begin to see a little bit more of outperformance here. All right, let's move on to earnings spotlight. Um, now, the first thing I want to pull up here, uh, this is a company, smaller company. No, we didn't really have any big companies reporting after the bell tonight. Um, so I'm going to pull up FIZZ. This is a heavily shorted stock. And the company blew out earnings. Market was expecting 46 cents. They came in at 77. Look at this move after hours. Shorts are going to be in trouble in the morning. I think the shorts already were in trouble. We have a short squeeze chart list over at Earnings Beats that we share with our members. This one's on it. The thing that I like to look for, when I see a stock that's heavily shorted, and then I see the stock start showing relative strength, look at this stock versus the soft drink index. This has been trending higher now for five or six months. It's also been trending higher versus the S&P for five or six months. This is not acting like a bad stock. 
And yet the market is thinking it's a bad stock with all the short interest that's out there. So FIZZ has been a really good performer. It has been a painful performer for shorts and it's only gonna get worse tomorrow morning when uh, the stock opens. Like I said, after hours, uh, we've got FIZZ trading up 12% to $71. Big, big report there. A couple other companies that reported, uh, uh, actually they may report tomorrow. Yeah, they report in the morning. Uh, this is Corn Ferry. So I'm just gonna pull the charts up here and we'll take a look at the uh, charts relative to their peers and to the S&P 500. But uh, Corn Ferry reports tomorrow morning. Um, I'm not really expecting much. If you look at the stock relative to its peers, um, it's just recently hit a 52 week low versus the S&P 500, it was near a 52 week low. This is not Wall Street embracing this company. This is Wall Street saying, I don't want any part of this. So if Wall Street's not accumulating it, I'm not very interested. Doesn't mean that it can't come out with good numbers. Um, it just means that Wall Street's not expecting a lot. So as a result, I would avoid it. Um, the last one I wanted to show you, this is Lindsay Corp. And we'll also look at this on a relative basis. And again, you know, you got this double top. We had a good rally in March and April. But the fact that we have not been able to go anywhere for the last two, two and a half months, and we're actually threatening this breakout down or breakdown at 8250, look at the relative strength here. Lindsay Corp relative to its peers has been going down. Same with the S&P 500. These are stocks I would not trust going into earnings. Um, these are stocks I would not be anticipating to have a big earning pre-earnings run because Wall Street's not accumulating. Got to remember how the market works. Wall Street, you know, all these analysts from the different financial firms, investment firms, they go out and meet with management. And they're allowed to go out and meet until the end of the quarter. And then from there, it's a quiet period. So they go out and meet, say, through June 30th. And then they're, they come back and they're buying, heading into the report. If they like what they're hearing, they are buying and accumulating, heading into earnings reports. That's why the market moves up pre-earnings. So you want to definitely keep that in mind. Um, let's see. So, you know, with this stock, LNN, I personally would just avoid it. I think there are many other stocks that look better. So let's go ahead and wrap up the show now. We're going to get into the three you must see. I'm going to start off with a company that reported great numbers um, in their quarterly report before uh, the market opened on Wednesday. FedEx. Stock came down off of its earlier high, but it had a huge move up, tested overhead resistance. We had gap resistance and a double top. We went up, tested that level, and then reversed off of it. I'm not surprised. I think this stock, I think if FedEx pulls back in the you know, 149, 150 area, that would be an interesting buy point for me. STZ, Constellation Brands. Um, nice attempt at a breakout after earnings. Couldn't make it, though. And as a result, I think this could lead to some more sideways consolidation. And then my final three you must see, this is a stock that just went public just recently. It has gone down every single day. It has, it has printed a lower high every day since going public. I wouldn't touch it until it prints a higher high. And when it does, we might get a reversal. So keep an eye on that. One last thing, go back over to Earnings Beats. Check out these portfolios. I'd love to have you join me Monday. I'm going to be doing a, um, a mid-year review, market outlook for the second half of the year. Trial members can come to that on Monday. So go in here, sign up, uh, $7 fully refundable 30-day trial. would love to have you. Everybody have a great day tomorrow. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.